I'm just starting the live stream. All right, we're uh, we're on live on YouTube. Don't look so excited, Pi. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, get everybody in. Just waiting for one more class to join. I'll just be with you in a moment. And they seem to be having a problem. So what we'll do is we'll get started and then we'll uh, hope they can join. We don't, they've always got the, oh, we've got somebody else coming in. Right, let's get started. Right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Teaching Live. It's uh, it's week eight, and I think if I, I might be right in saying that this will be the last week for Scottish schools because um, they 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 start their summer holiday much earlier than than uh, English and Welsh schools. Uh, so I think you're possibly in your last week this week, uh, Scottish schools. In which case. We hope you have a brilliant summer and we'll be distinctly uh, jealous while you're all sitting around with your feet up doing whatever you fancy next week, next week. And we're here uh, doing teaching live. If you're if you're in a Scottish school and you want to join us uh, on uh, next Monday, you can always jump on the YouTube live stream. Just don't tell your teachers um, that you're doing that. So <laughs> um, so welcome, everybody. It's week eight. It's week four of our story it's the last last week of our story writing so pi has been scratching his head um tearing his hair out uh trying to come up with a resolution for the story that we've been writing so how are you this morning mr corbett yeah i'm very well and last week i had a bit of a treat i went and visited john moore primary school which is a school that we've worked with Possibly from the beginning, I don't know, but so, um, yes. yeah, from the beginning. And the head was telling me it's very much teaching live has been very much part of their year six work. Met the children. We um, did a writing session together. We wrote about an owl, um, cracking piece of writing. It's really good to meet them all. And I know that they're waiting, uh, um, ready for uh, us to delve into chapter four. And I, I saw a, some of the yeah. writing. You posted some of it on 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 Facebook. Pi. I was very impressed, actually. Yeah, that that you saw the piece of writing that we did, and it it was great. I tell you what, um, John. I think partly the the Kennings really helped to give it depth. Yes, I I, I just want something I've always struggled with. Uh, I I, I love writing, but. Coming up with original kennings and original uh, similes is something I always find really hard, and I'm always super impressed with 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 uh, kids that seem to be able to yeah. come up with stuff just like that out of their yeah. heads, which is yeah. So, how are you this morning, David? Uh, I'm very well, very well, John. Uh, um, kind of peak physical fitness, feeling <laughs> great, uh, ready to go, and uh, see what the ending. Uh, because I've, one of my jobs in the week is to obviously approve the writing that comes through. And there were some cracking chapter threes, Pi, um, really worth looking at. If you, go, if you go through and have a look at pupil posts, it is in chronological order or reverse chronological order. So you can go through, click on the pupil posts and read them. Some amazing chapter threes. Can't wait for chapter four. Yeah, and I love that idea, um, David, that once um, they've done chapter four, they can then take the four chapters particularly if it's been typed up, and make it into a little book. Um, yeah. We've made some illustration, run it off, so everybody's got their own copy. One of the things that they do in John Moore, um, the head was showing me, was that they do actually um, print 
um, every, uh, uh, print booklets. There's some website that they use. I probably wrote it down somewhere. Or other. I can't remember it, but one of the children might know. Um, but they, they get them printed. And I thought that was a tremendous idea. Yeah. So um, what we're going to do on this final um, final version. Uh, so they're about to leave. In the way I've interpreted it, they found Hermitage, Rigglesworth, the lost explorer. And they're about to leave. They meet the thought bears who had um, rescued Hermitage from his wreckage. And um, but the thought bears realize that the sky goblins are about to attack. Now, of course, you don't have to have sky goblins. I was very, very tempted to have dragons. As you know, I love dragons. So it could be dragons that are going to attack. It could be sky goblins. It could be some other. It could be trolls. It could be some other invention that you you come up with that some sort of threat is going to attack them and they've got to try and get the uh their sky ship off the ground up and running off the ground and sail away and escape from the sky goblins so i thought what we do as a starting point we we go back to one we've done before which is the reporter interviewing somebody who in my case has met a sky goblin so when you do your in your pairs you do your interviews it might be about a sky goblin or it might be some other threat that you've invented. So um, and after two minutes, you swap roles. So one of you is the interviewer um, and one of you is the um, is the person who saw the sky goblin or the dragon or whatever it is. So, David, which role do you want to play? I'm going to play the role that means you are the person that's seen it. OK, so uh, in the notes, I did give some suggestions. And no doubt John will get those up on the screen once we get running. Um, but uh, OK, so let's role play this a little bit, David. OK. OK, well, uh, welcome, everybody. Joining us today, we have um, Ralph Wigglesworth um, from Stroud, who's seen something very strange. Ralph, could you? Uh, well, good morning, first of all. But can you describe what you've what you've seen? Well, you're not going to believe this. It was it was it was very funny, right, because I was outside at the end of the garden and I was looking over the wall and I was looking down the street, down Farm Lane, right, which is just out there, Farm Lane, and not much goes on on Farm Lane, right, when I saw what, first of all, in the distance looked like a swarm of bees. But it wasn't a swarm of bees because it got closer and closer and I realised that they weren't bees, they got bigger and bigger and it was, um, it was, it was a whole cloud of them. It, it was a cloud of goblins all flying up the lane they was. And then they saw me and they settled on the road. Wow. And so what, what happened next? What did you do? And how did you feel? Well, I should have ducked down and hidden, but he didn't because I was paralysed. I was absolutely paralysed in fear. There was hundreds of them, these sky goblins. Now, they weren't too big. They were about the size of a Labrador, right? About sort of so, oh, so I, and uh, they funny little critters they are, sky goblins, very, very ugly things they are, horrible. Did they, did they say anything to you? Did they communicate with you at all? Well, they made a lot of noise. They don't, they don't speak English like what I do, right? <laughs> but they made a lot of noise, they do. Yeah, they they uh, they were a bit looking aggressive, right? They got they covered in green scales, very very nasty looking. They got these thin little red and yellow eyes, and these sharp little horns sticking out. And they've all got wings. They can fly. Sky goblins' aces. So I was looking at them, and they got these horrible horrible claws, which are very very sharp. And I knew that because some of them were scratching like cats. They were scratching on the trees. They were, and some of them were digging. Oh, it was, it was, I tell you, it was quite something. Wow. Did, was anyone else there with you? Did anyone else witness what happened? My cat did. The cat stood there. He took, he took one look and he legged it right across the garden, back inside the house. He was terrified. One or two of the sky goblins, they stopped and they were sniffing after that cat. I reckon they're cat snatchers and dog snatchers. And that would explain what happened to Mrs. Jenkins Tibbles. Because he went missing. I reckon the sky goblin had him. Well, OK, well, thank you very much for joining us today. Just for everyone else in Stroud, 
be uh, wary of the sky goblins that Pies, uh, that Ralph is talking <laughs> about. Oh, thank you very much. I'm much obliged to you, sir. <laughs> right. You don't have to do an accent, but it's a bit of fun. I mean, obviously, halfway through, John will tell us when two minutes up. Try and get a bit of um, what did it look like? What was its skin like, its hair like? Try and build that description up. Um, because that will help us when we get to describing. You don't have to do sky goblins. Remember, it could be some other form of a form of um, threat that you've imagined. Yeah. So, so I put on the screen there the the yeah. note, teacher's notes pie. So um, right. describing skin, hair, eyes, ears, teeth, hands, legs, color, the noise they make. Um, anything else? What they were wearing? Uh, did they were they carrying any weapons? uh etc 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 so uh so i'll put those notes up i'll also put my timer up uh which is there let me just um bring the timer up for you and we will go on to uh i'll give you four minutes and one of you is the interviewer the other one is the interviewee after two minutes i'll stop you and uh get you to change over um, so you can have two minutes each of doing the doing the interview. So four minutes on the clock, starting now. Okay, it's time to swap roles. So if you were interviewing, you're now the interviewee.
And that sound uh, signifies the end of the game. So um, we'll go straight on to the Teaching Live website when I just get it up. Bear with me one second. All right, here we go. Well, a couple of late comers joining the session, so I'll just get those in as well. Right, let's get on to the Teaching Live website and on to today's session. Well, not surprisingly, John, we're going to follow up that little activity and um, and start to think about building our description. Um, so we're just going to write sentences. And first of all, thinking about the creature that you're looking at. So mine was a sky goblin. Yours might be a dragon or something else. What did you see? So this is describing what we saw. I saw a dark shadow creeping towards the sky ship. It had thin eyes. So I'm looking at the eyes now. You could say I saw thin eyes that stared at me through the gloom like twin slits torn through green skin. Its skin was covered in scales and glinted in the moonlight. Its hands were gnarled. I love that word gnarled. We used to, as a kid, we used to call it gnarled to remember how to spell it. Its hands were gnarled, but the fingernails reached out like jagged talons. And talons is the word that you use to describe um, uh, birds of prey don't have claws, they have talons. I saw its matted hair, straggly as weeds in a river. I saw its ears jutted out, twisting as it listened for a sound. I saw its teeth were blunt, worn by years of chewing and grinding on bones. I saw its spindly bony legs as it bounded onto the sky ship. I saw its green body glistening in the firelight like a shark's back. So using similes, well-chosen words, when you looked at it, what did you see? And pick out those details, the eyes, the skin, the hands, the scales, the hair, its ears, its teeth, its legs, its body. So you've got possibilities, lots of sentences. You might want to do some what you heard. I heard something unearthly breathing as the goblin took heavy, rasping breaths. I heard tortured screams as the goblins attacked. What did you feel? I felt its cold, damp skin like the icy scales of an ancient monster. And what did you think? I wondered whether I would survive the encounter. So when we're building our paragraph, we're going to have to have some visuals. So you build the picture for the reader. What did you see? But also, what did you hear? And maybe if you touched it, what would the skin of a dragon actually feel like or the wings of a dragon or its fiery breath? What would that feel like? Yeah. And maybe what you wondered. What we're looking for is... Uh extending the ideas so so rather than its hair was long uh it's matted hair straggly as weeds in a river much more district descriptive so we're looking for that kind of descriptive writing absolutely yeah so building up just trying sentences i saw i heard i felt just trying sentences building up the whole business of description so when you come to do your paragraphs you've already got um Ollie and Mia are straight in. I saw a white light coming from the open door. So I think you could you could uh, improve that um, by adding some description. Describe the door. Add a little bit of description. Describe the shaft of light beaming onto the corridor. I don't know that you can make that a little bit more atmospheric, I think. Which word in that would you say is a weaker word? I would say that coming is a weaker word. Yeah, we could do something. I saw white light filtering through the open door, seeping through the oozing through the open door. I think we could do some work on that as well. Uh, Noah from uh, MJS is, is on to it. I, as it flew by my face, I saw its golden hair, uh, golden fiery hair blow in the wind as it let out a... Ro loud roar. Very good, Noah. Uh, 
Uh, Leah from Stonewood Woodford. As I stared over the sky ship's edge, uh, you need an apostrophe for sky ship's edge because it's the edge belonging to the sky ship, Leah. I saw a dark, hairy figure floating in the sky. So Ewan from Forest, I saw vines snatching, crewmate after crewmate, each one screaming with fear. <clears throat> and Omar, I saw a slithering snake, a slithering snake going through the grass. Omar, you could nip back. That word going is a bit weak. But what you don't want to end up with is I saw a slithering snake slithering. So you've got to think of an alternative. But I like the idea of the snake. Approaching the ancient gate, I heard gears grinding as the gate stood up to reveal an ancient beast lost for centuries. Loving that one. Angel and Mary. Harrison and Summer, if you're going to start with in the distance, you need a comma after it and capital for I. In the distance, I saw a red glowing house. So try and describe the creature. So Callie, year five. Um, well done. Good go. I saw a sharp tooth on the floor, like a shark's tooth. Tooth of a shark. So you've got to get that um, apostrophe in uh, there. Um, but I like the way you've had a good go at doing a simile. Shark's tooth from a baby sky goblin's slimy mouth. Don't double check, but you, your full stops and things. I saw its long tongue when it opened its scary mouth. That word scary is a bit weak. See if you can choose something a bit more descriptive. So you're not just telling me, but you're making me feel a shudder. Adelaide from MJS. I saw a bright yellow eye reflecting the street lights in the dark shadows. I like mm. that a lot, Adelaide. That's very good. Nice detail in there, John. Very good detail. I like the yeah, yeah reflecting the street lights. Very good. Well done, Alfie. With the deep breath idea. Amir. From St. Patrick's, I saw big flashing red eyes. I don't know, that word big is a bit bit ordinary. Maybe just I saw flashing red eyes. Could do a simile as large as. Yeah, we've not had many similes uh, this morning. If, try and work on uh, a, a few similes. Savannah, well done. I like your slimy scales, that alliteration. And Nicole, I like the idea of the tail peeking out from a bush. Alfie, <laughs> your mafia bosses is a funny idea, but that is coming to me. That word coming, you could do a, a stronger verb there. I'm just thinking there as well, Pat, could you name the mafia boss? Oh, yeah. You know, think of a real kind of, because they're normally kind of Italian, aren't they? Yes. Um, Donatello, something. That sounds like a type of ice cream, but yes. <laughs> it's not it. Don it wasn't Donatello, one of the ninja turtles. <laughs> How you know that fact, Pi? I do not know. <laughs> that bewilders me. <laughs> you learn something every day doing this. Yes, I've got a son and he was very into that. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> I had to dress up as a turtle on one occasion. Uh, now, I just spotted a simile, which was a good one. I felt a sudden gust of wind as if a ghost was walking right through me. Mm. Nice one. Uh, which is Janavi and Anvi from MJS. That's a really good one. Nice one. So the similes, remember, it's either as or like. It just builds the description for the reader. Oscar and Mayer, double check yours. You missed off something that you know about. Taylor, I saw a shadow dance behind an emerald bush. That sounds quite nice. I don't know. Twig snapped and leaves, not leaves, leaves. It turns to a V. V E S, crunched. A nice use of crunched. Oscar from Stanwood Woodford, I saw eagles flying together in formation. Now I'm 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 screaming out for a simile there uh, to extend that idea. I saw eagles flying in formation, like 
So Chloe and Esme at MJS, I saw a hooded figure creeping through the sunlit streets of the, of the city, oblivious to everything around it, with ruby red slits of eyes and gnarled pale fingers. A nice little extended piece there. I like the um, the hooded figure. Yes, exactly. So you don't know who it is. That's the scene. Yeah, or what it is. Very yeah. nice. Naomi, I saw that it stared at the tree as if it was prey. I heard it was hissing angrily and uncontrollably as if it was being possessed. Killian from Monera, I saw its radiant blue eyes staring back at me. Lily, I saw the antenna of the tallest swamp monster alive. Uh, Lacey from Forest Academy. This is this is a good simile, a very original one. I saw the glowing red eye with just a black strip down the middle, splitting it, splitting it into two. Yeah, I think you just need in two there, um, Lacey. Um, splitting it in two, like a balance beam over a huge lava pit. Mm. Very original, that one. Seth from Forest, I saw a swift silhouette, like a the alliteration there, of crimson red glide closer and closer by the second towards the skyship. Nice dramatic sentence. And Oliver, as I glared into the sky, thinking what to do next, I saw the crispy gold fur Shimmer in the light. Shimmer in the lightning as it floated towards the, the earth, floated back to earth. Right, we need to come out of the padlet. Some good sentences there, John. Nice bits of description. So we'll come out of the padlet and we will, uh, I'll ask David if we've got uh, any audio for this morning. We have. We've got a we've got a, a, a nice little selection uh, this week, and seeing as though it's we think it's probably Scotland's uh, Scottish schools final week, I've gone with somebody from um, St Patrick's. So if you go on to the um, the bottom audio, you should be able to see. I think it'll be on your second row, Mia's. Uh, in red or orange, yep. from St. Patrick's, uh, Chapter 3. Very well read. Um, and, yeah, I was really impressed. So do you, you want to play that, John? Be better yep. from your end. Chapter 3. In the morning, Captain Bonnie set jobs for the crew and they set off doing a variety of tasks. One group set out looking for clean water and another for traces of the explorer. Brandon was given strict orders to stay on the ship out of any unwanted trouble. It wasn't long after that, Brandon got so fidgety he couldn't stay on the ship for another minute. The sight of the glim forest made him utterly bored. It was only after that he noticed he hadn't seen Leonardo all morning. Come to think of it, he actually hadn't seen him since last night. A hunt revealed he wasn't on the ship by the wreckage or the grasslands. He found himself walking towards the entrance of the forest and peeked inside. Tall pine trees projected shadows on glowing moss. Tree branches scattered on the pathways and the scent of flowers roamed the air. It seemed pleasing, but what was moving amongst the trees? Slowly stepping on the dry branches, a large shadow started making its way towards him. There was a flash of red eyes. It was as if there was an echo passing through the trees. Follow me, it's safe. Brandon didn't know whether to follow it or not. Its voice sounded deep, but was sprinkled with sweetness. It was then out of the shadows, stood a ginormous leopard. It seemed as if his feet were glued to the floor. Its gaze fixed into his. Escape was impossible. Echo leopards are very rare to encounter with. They are able to communicate with humans and are the leaders of the forest. 
just above the telekinesis tiger. All creatures bow down to the leopards. Brandon was relieved to find himself with Leonardo again inside the massive cavern where the leopards had been taking care of Charles ever since the skyship crashed. The chief was an ancient leopard and echoed a warning. The storm goblins are close. Giving Leonardo a violet stone, the leper king hissed, this will help you. With the Echo Leopard's help, they took Charles back to the Pearl. Captain Bonnie and the crew were already back at the ship and Brandon declared the warning. In the blink of an eye, everybody leapt into action. Starting the engine, lifting up the anchor, they lit the flame, preparing to leave. But they were too late. Now, for me, Pi, that could have been... Uh, she could have been reading that from a famous author's book. It sounds like it's from a book. What did you think? Yeah, it's a terrific piece of writing. And one of the really good things, I thought she read it tremendously clearly. So everybody listening could hear every single word. Um, so, And it wasn't rushed, because when, you, when you're recording, it's easy to get nervous and rush. So tremendous um, reading. A lot of very good pieces um, this week. I was looking at Layla's from Manera. Uh, and of course, Ibrahim as ever, adding to his, um, Benjamin, Neve, Isabella, packing one there. Um, so a lo lot of really good bits of writing. So, yeah, tremendous work there. Yeah, I thought some, some of the description in Mears was, was terrific. Um, I like, particularly like the, the uh, sentence, tall pine trees projected shadows on glowing moss. I thought that was a really good way of just, just saying you know, well, the, the trees cast shadows, which is a bit boring, uh, but tall pine trees projected shadows on glowing moss, tree branches scattered on the pathways and the scent of flowers roamed the air. It was just, that's just a really good uh, description of, of a forest, I thought, really brought it to, to life for me. Yeah, I think uh, as well, that she'd obviously thought that there's like a hierarchy of animals in the forest. Um, so it obviously really thought about yeah, the echo leopard, the telekinesis tigers. Yes, <laughs> I have no idea what a telekinesis tiger does, but it sounds um, quite uh, um, intriguing. Yeah, lovely, lovely piece. Well done. <laughs> it is fantastic. Yeah, it's a great idea that telekinesis tiger. Fantastic stuff. Echo leopard as well. Right, let's get on to Padlet number two. So, no surprise, we're going to build on the work that we've. Um, been doing and I thought we'd have a go at a suspense um, paragraph so what I've got is a list of um, starters sentence starters hardly daring to breathe and you've got to introduce your main character so hardly bear I would say hardly daring to breathe Mariana or Ty and then what they're doing, but um, but um, but um. At that moment, she or he saw bit of description, and then terrified or horrified or petrified or disturbed or whatever you're going to go an ED starter. Then we got our old friends the outside, inside, and then something. So let's have a look at my one. Hardly daring to breathe, comma. Remember these are adverbials, so apart from something, you've got to have a comma after them. Ty darted into the ship's galley and ducked down. At that moment, he heard something scraping along the deck and saw the door shift open. Terrified, he knelt down and waited in the shadows. Outside, the goblins swarmed over the ship's hull. Inside, Ty held his breath as something moved towards him. Sharp claws, its claws scratching the ground. Something was edging closer. Something that smelt of bones, something that had not one, but two thin red eyes. And you'll notice there at the end, John, I piled up the three somethings, and that can be quite an effective thing. But of course, the word something hides what it is, so the reader's using our imagination. So obviously, we don't want the whole paragraph, John, but trying out some of those sentences, because I think they'll be very useful when you get to the dramatic moment 
the suspenseful, tense moment in your final chapter. Yes, and suspense is something that um, it's quite hard to to build into your writing because uh, people tend to get very carried away with just this happened, then that happened, then that just sort of narrative, discursive, telling people what happened. And actually, what you've got to do is draw back and and try and hide what's going to happen and build up the tension before you reveal. Yeah, you've got to get the the main character reacting, probably hiding, and then somehow get the threat getting closer and closer with a few clues, like a glimpse of something or hearing something. Yeah, it's 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 sort of stopping the the narrative flow a little bit in order to get your readers yeah. where you want them. Um, thinking, oh, this is going to be a, a serious problem. Right, on to the Padlet. Let's see how we get on. Uh, so we're looking for suspense. See how we get on with our suspense. Uh, Savannah, terrified, Frankie sprinted away from the murderous man manticore, which I like, before it was too late. Too late. I'm sure you know... Uh, that that Savannah, which two is it? Uh, Gabriel from Forest Academy, hardly daring to breathe. AJ's heart was beating faster than a lion hunting for prey. Yep, like that. Another hardly daring to breathe. Melissa, Amanda, need a capital A, Amanda, for Amanda rather. Uh, hid in hid in the shut into the hid in the shadows as an evil teddy crawled slowly on the ship. Trudy and Ewan and Sicily. At that moment, he heard something scraping along the wall and he saw the shadow of a knife. Ooh. And then, da. Yeah, yeah, that's good, Trudy, Ewan and Sicily. It's an using of something scraping, isn't it? Yes. And the shadow, the shadow of a knife. Well, not the not the knife itself, but the shadow of a knife. Yeah, very good. Archie, hardly daring to breathe, Josh darted into the skyship and hid. Capital J for Josh, but other than that, nice little sentence. Gabriel, hardly daring to breathe, AJ's heart was beating faster. And the lion hunting for prey. Now, there's a bit of decision there, Gabriel. You could say was beating or just say AJ's heart beat faster. Uh, Rob, Emily, I like your word whimpered there. Nicole, one pair of ruby red eyes were visible from the shadows. They were staring at me. Really nice couple of sentences. Joshua from Stonewood Woodford, um, which has disappeared from my view. <laughs> and I, I, the reason I picked it out was he chose a different word to hardly daring to breathe. He, he said barely daring to breathe which um i thought uh, was a was a good alternative uh, nicole from forest one pair of ruby red eyes were visible from the shadows they were staring at me Hardly daring to breathe, Tom disobeyed his mind. I like that. You need a full stop there, Gracie. He walked closer and closer uh, to the creature, the anonymous creature. I like Poppy's idea of, of um, she started briefly missing a heartbeat. I thought that was an interesting little starter there. Cole barely dipped beneath the creature's swiping claws. Callie or Kaylee from Monera. Remember, if you start terrified, you've got to go comma. Terrified, comma, 
Rick bowed down to the King Goblin. Now, Marvin, something got closer to the crashed alien ship. That got closer. I wonder if you could get a, a better verb there. Stronger verb, something um, slithered closer, something shifted closer, edged, tiptoed, crept, moved. So uh, you need when you uh, read through uh, Clinton, you, there's a there's a <laughs> <laughs> an obvious problem with your sentence. Uh, not daring to move, Ben ran fast as he could to the cave. Ah. Have a think about that one. <laughs> I like Jake and Sam's got lightning goblins in theirs. Petrified by the lightning goblins, Tom sprinted away as if his life depended on it. I mean, in brackets, which it did. <laughs> Mia from St. Patrick's at that moment. Brandon leapt between the trees. Uh, what stood in front of him? I think you need a full stop there, uh, Mia. Full stop. What stood in front of him sent a shiver down his spine. Carmen Sienna. Petrified, Claire tiptoed across the room, trying not to make a sound. Mukil from MJS, hardly daring to make a sound, Bob darted to the ship and thought he was safe. But he didn't know how wrong he was. Classic stuff. <laughs> so well done, Josh. Inside was calm and outside was chaos. Bolton Parish, Aza, something was bothering him, not allowing him to breathe as he was so scared. Right, we'll come out of the uh, Padlet and we'll have a look, go back to the session page and have a look at the gallery. <coughs> trying to remember what last week's challenge was shadows oh yeah oh yes and i think this was very interesting i think i'm right in saying only st patrick's did it well they've done really well though look at that lucy and izzy that's great loey and jesse yeah neve. i like now that's really good neve that's very clever yeah i mean the, the i like the one at the top with the Four people on the bench. Do you yes. know that? That reminds me of the Beatles. The album cover help. Uh, yeah, it, it, absolutely, it does. Yes, and um, the children will have no idea what you're talking about, Pine. No, they won't. Have you seen um, Lois from St Pat's uh, a bit further down? Further down on the right there. Oh uh, yes. Uh, I don't know if it's done on purpose, but it cleverly the shadow for a leg looks like it's a. Like a pirate's leg or something. Yeah, I noticed that. Going into the chain. I don't know if that was intentional or not, Lois, but it was quite clever. I think it probably is. And there were there were also a few from St. Pat's that had um, children were doing some running jumps and were taking pictures of their shadows jumping in the air. But because the children were on the picture, I couldn't put it on the, the, the uh, paddler, but I did see them and they were really good. Yeah, I like Jude, uh, Jude's bird. Um, it's very, some very good. Uh, Kira from St. Patrick's has done a heart as well. Um, some terrific stuff. Well done. I uh, did wonder about that one, uh, Pi, I have to say. But uh, the, St. Patrick's did really well with that. <laughs> I mean, shadows have always fascinated me. I think they're very intriguing things. Shadows, the way they're a bit like a twin, they sort of imitate, they copy, they're always they're always with you, potentially. What have we got well, for this week's gallery challenge? Sky goblins, inevitably. And 
you can see four there done by a friend of mine called, uh, funnily enough, called John, John Ralphs. And then you can see Joshua made one. <laughs> Very good. He did that in the lockdown. He made a uh, kid I know. He made a little sky goblin. I like I like all the fruit on the on on his uh, on his yeah. a, on his kitchen apron that he's wearing. <laughs> oh, and a spider and a snail and a slug. Yeah, very good. <laughs> so the challenge is to if you've done sky goblins, draw a sky goblin. Uh, if you've done something else, draw something else. The little yeah. illustration of the main threat is what we're looking for here. Okay, that will be an interesting one, and uh, you can obviously. Um, um, Add that to the gallery, and if you're if you're going on holiday and you fancy doing a drawing while you're on holiday, you could you could still add it to the gallery. So that's uh, something that you could do in your own time, because we all like drawing and love coming up with bits of art. So that's the um, gallery challenge, and now uh, we're on to the uh, end of our story, the blog challenge. Well, fourth part, the crew are gonna. They need to escape. So what I did was I, I just, I think David mentioned this, or maybe it was you, John, last week. It's important to reread the previous chapter to tune yourself back into what was happening. So this is the last two paragraphs. Mariana was amazed to find herself reunited with Ty inside a massive network of caves where the thought bears lived. They had been caring for Hermitage after his skyship had crashed. The chief was an enormous bear of great age, and he cast into their minds a warning. Sky goblins are close. Pressing a small ruby-coloured stone into Ty's hand, the bear king hissed, you'll need this. With the thought bear's help, the children took Hermitage back to the Cascan. Captain Culshaw and his crew had returned, and Mariana spluttered out the warning. Instantly, everyone leapt into action, manning the rigging, firing the engine, storing water and provisions, battening down the hatches and preparing the skyship to leave. But it was too late. Chapter 4. The engines roared. Captain Culshaw struggled at the helm as the Cascan's mighty balloon filled with hot air and she began to lift off the ground. Ty heard a terrible screeching and from out of the clouds tore what looked like a swarm of sky goblins. Leathery wings beat like drums as they descended towards the cascan. Thin green bodies twisted in the air as they hurtled down, their red eyes flashing and sharp teeth gnashing. The thought bears stood as one, projecting mighty mind waves to surround the cascan with an invisible protection shield that even the goblins could not penetrate. The cascan rose upwards and began to move forwards. Meanwhile, the goblins attached the attacked the bears, their ragged fingernails like metallic talons. The king bear batted the goblins to one side, roaring in anger. By now, the cascan was in the air and already picking up pace. However, the further they flew away from the bears, the distance weakened the protective force field until soon it could no longer shield them. Goblins now began to swarm across the ship's hull. The crew raced to the sides and began to push goblins back off the wooden planking. Mariana grabbed a large pole and swung it in the air, beating the enemy back. Ty could see that some goblins clung to the rigging and were trying to slice open the leathery balloon, but it was made of dragon skin and not so easily ruined. He watched with panic as more and more crawled over the cascan, seeking a way to destroy the ship. He flinched as one smaller goblin approached him shuffling across the decking with its red eyes staring at him. Its jagged teeth were stained and its forked tongue flickered like a cobra, sensing its prey. Stepping back, Ty gasped. Hardly bearing to breathe, Ty darted behind the helm and ducked down. At that moment, he heard something scraping along the deck and saw the goblin's silhouette. Terrified, he waited in the shadows. Above, the goblin swarmed over the ship's carcass. Below, Ty held his breath as something moved towards him, its claws scratching the ground. Something was edging closer, something that smelt of bone, something that had not one but two thin red eyes. The next moment, the goblin was airborne as Mariana had swiped it a mighty blow. Grinning at Ty, she shouted, Arm yourself! 
Mm. At that moment, he remembered the red stone that the king of the bears had handed him. He tugged it from his pocket and feel it pulsing in his hand as if it was angry. A thought slipped from the stone into his mind and instantly Ty knew what he should do. As the goblins swarmed over the balloon, screeching and cackling as they sought a way to destroy the cascan skin, Ty threw the firestone into their midst. There was an almighty flare of brilliant light and the goblins immediately fell from the balloon, tumbling down, 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 their wings incapable of flight. The crew rushed to the handrails, cheering as they peered over the edge. Far below, they could see the goblin swarm dropping towards the sea. That afternoon, the cascan had been cleared and cleaned. Goblin slime was washed from the decks and any wounds had been tended to by the ship's doctor with healing herbs and bandages made from soothing leaves. Mariana and Ty shared the binoscope. They could see distant islands waiting invitingly. Standing beside them, their new friend, the ancient explorer Ermitage Wrigglesworth, began to tell them his story. The Cascan sailed on through the skies. New lands, new adventures, new horizons were waiting them. Well done, Pi. I like the, your, your ending. Um, I've got, uh, I like particularly the, you've got the um, inside outside above the goblins swarmed over the ship's carcass. Whoops, um, didn't mean to do that. Below, um, where have I gone? <laughs> Uh, below, Ty held his breath as something moved towards him, its claws scratching the ground. So you've got your uh, above and below, um, yeah. and you've got um, your hidden uh, creature scre scratching the ground, edging closer, something that smelt of bones, something that had not one but two thin red eyes, hiding yep. what it is. And I quite like the... Uh, the uh, the way that you described a thought slipping from the stone into his mind, so that the the object that the, the uh, firestone that the thought bears had given to uh, Ty, um, but I did I spotted a typo I think um, now where was it uh, yes. Um, in, yeah. uh, and the goblins immediately fell from the balloon, tumbling down, 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 their wings incapable of flight. I, I, comma? Is that, should there be a comma there? I think. Well, there yeah, I think there should be. As I was reading it, uh, I noticed, because if you ignore the first two downs, it then reads, down their wings incapable of flight, which doesn't work. Makes sense, yes. Yeah. Down, 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 comma, their wings incapable of flight. I thought that when I read it. Yes. And I thought to myself, I bet John spots that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was. Yes, I did. So 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 that's so um, basically what happens is you've got the uh, crew rushing to the Cascan, getting the sky ship in the air, but they're attacked by whatever creature you've decided you're being attacked by. Um, and then uh, somehow you fight, fight the creatures off. And then the uh, the ending is a really simple one, but but nonetheless effective. Um, they're starting to listen to the stories of the ancient explorer Hermitage Rigglesworth sailing on to new skies, new lands, and new adventures. So yeah, it, kind of, it sets up the next story. It, uh, exactly that. So that often, was, yeah, so that, does it with these things. Yeah, that was my thought that actually the next chapter could be one of Rigglesworth's adventures. Yes. Um, but it all, it, so it, it, I've ended it leaving it open for, for more possibilities rather than take, I could have taken them back home, but I think they've travelled so far. They'll want to explore more lands and hear from Hermitage. Yes, very good. Uh, so that's, that's, the that's the final chapter of the story. <laughs> Next week we'll be moving on to... Um, is it report writing? Why I can't remember. Um, it's uh, writing in role, like uh, a, a log entry or something like that. Oh, diaries. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That'll be fun. 
So uh, we will see you next time. If you're about to go on holiday, we hope you have a great summer. Um, just to let you know, uh, Scottish schools in particular, we're we're on. We're going to take a hiatus uh, next term. We're not teaching live. Isn't going to be back. We may hopefully do one or two um, specials, possibly um, throughout the term. So keep an eye out for. We'll we'll still communicate via email with you to let you know what what's going on. Uh, hopefully with a view to returning in the new year. So we've still got two weeks to go for everybody else. Um, uh, two two weeks before the end of term but uh, Scottish schools have a great summer and everybody else we will see you next week for the last couple of sessions of teaching live so it's bye from me yeah well done everybody bye from me bye Scotland and bye from me well done <laughs>